Nigeria, Africa's most populous and arguably most important nation. This country of 132 million people has a long and stormy history. Today, Nigeria is a democratic republic and is benefiting economically from its vast oil reserves. Still, corruption, crime, and poverty haunt its people. Yet God's grace is shining brightly upon this nation. Two confessional Lutheran church bodies, in fellowship with our own Wisconsin Synod, All Saints Lutheran Church of Nigeria and Christ the King Lutheran Church of Nigeria, are faithfully proclaiming the gospel of peace through Jesus to the Nigerian people. The history of these two churches reaches back 70 years to the days of the old Synodical Conference. Pastor Doug Weiser, our Synod's liaison to Nigeria, tells the history of our fellowship with these churches. It all goes back really to the Synodical Conference of North America years ago. In its 50th anniversary, the Synodical Conference was looking for some new place to found a mission. And through various ways, God led the Synodical Conference to send a survey team here to Nigeria in this very area in the southeast corner of the country. A mission was established, which eventually became the Lutheran Church of Nigeria. Wisconsin Synod pastor Dr. William Schweppe served in this mission for 22 years, heading up its seminary, its schools, and expansion. Unfortunately, Wisconsin Synod involvement in Nigeria ceased with the breakup of the Synodical Conference in 1962. In 1969, a group of congregations split from Lutheran Church Nigeria because of doctrines and practices they disagreed with. These churches sought association with the Wisconsin Synod, and in 1981, we declared fellowship with Christ the King Lutheran Church of Nigeria. The church in the village of Abiakpo is one of the oldest Lutheran churches in Nigeria. Its story reflects the split that eventually led to the formation of Christ the King Lutheran Church in Nigeria. This place is Abiakpo, one of the original strongholds of the Lutheran Church Nigeria when Synodical Conference did its mission work together under men like uh, Professor William Schweppe. In later years, when Christ the King Lutheran Church Nigeria seceded from LCN, they shared this older spot in which I'm standing. But there was some acrimony here about that sharing of space. And so near us is a church built by the Lutheran Church Nigeria some years ago. And behind us, another church built later by Christ the King. And the old church was left to ruins. So here we have them. Two former congregations together in one synod, but now no longer connected because of fellowship divisions. Wisconsin Synod's association with All Saints Lutheran Church of Nigeria began in 2001 as the result of a blessed surprise. Then a surprise came in the late 1990s when one of the, the president of All Saints Lutheran Church Nigeria, centered in Agoja, almost 300 miles distant from here, led by the Lord, just uh, happened to visit one of our Christ the King congregations. They didn't know about Wisconsin Synod, they didn't know about Christ the King Lutheran Church, but when he visited there, he knew that was the doctrine that they also had. They had stepped out of the Lutheran Church Nigeria in 1991, and God blessed us with doctrinal talks and all the rest until we could join together in 2001. All Saints Lutheran Church and Christ the King Lutheran Church work primarily in the southeast corner of Nigeria. All Saints, which has 23 congregations with almost 4,800 souls, is centered around the city of Agoja. Christ the King's 28 congregations and nearly 3,000 souls are spread throughout the triangle formed by the cities of Abak, Port Harcourt, and Calabar. Christ the King also is following up contacts with an interested non-Lutheran congregation in the city of Lagos, the largest city in Nigeria and one of the largest in the world. Everyone is fine. Lambert sends his greetings. Wells has no permanent missionaries in Nigeria. The work is being done by 17 national pastors, 11 evangelists, and the dedicated lay people of these two synods. <laughs> I heard 
heard of SNAP. Yeah. When uh, you come to Nigeria and see both of these synods in action, you're very impressed with the positive things that they have. Their spirituality, their devotional life is great. Their organization skills are really highly tuned. And, they, and, and how hard they work at everything you help them with, they work very hard. There are some difficulties. One major difficulty is finances. Nigeria's petroleum wealth does not reach down to most people. The majority of Nigerians are poor by American standards. Most of their cities lack the development we are used to in the United States. Many Nigerian roads are little more than sand paths, and those that are paved are not maintained. Rural Nigeria is dotted with villages which remain quite primitive. Modern conveniences we take for granted are absent in the average Nigerian home. Financial hardship does affect the work of our Nigerian brothers and sisters. Although these two synods are self-supporting, they are limited by their lack of money. Christ the King Lutheran Church in Akorufen is a prime example. It is served by Pastor Sunday Udo. Uh, when I came here, we have this uh, small church building. Then because of the increase of members, daily has got work. We have decided to have a new church building, as you see it, uncompleted here. The church is uncompleted because the congregation lacks the funds to put a roof on the building. The members here are very ambitious members, very hardworking. They take their own initiative, roll up their sleeves, make their cement blocks, uh, and have built the walls to their height now, waiting for the trusses and the roofing. Corrugated steel roofing over here is so very expensive. That's often where churches get stuck, and they've purchased some of their corrugated sheets, which they call zincs, uh, but they haven't got enough. So they're, they're biding their time until somehow the funds come in for them to finish off the church, which I estimate once they fill it, it will seat maybe 400 people. These challenges have not diminished the spirit or zeal of our Nigerian brothers and sisters. They are eagerly sharing their faith with others, which is bearing fruit. Since 1969, Christ the King has more than tripled its number of congregations, while in recent years All Saints has established some new preaching stations. Sunday worship services in Nigeria are truly celebrations and can go on for hours. Music dominates the worship. Musical style may be foreign to our American ears, but often the strains of familiar hymns and liturgy are heard. Nigerians love to praise their Lord with their voices and their bodies. Their songs of praise sometimes last over 15 to 20 minutes. Instead of passing the collection plates, Nigerians joyfully dance their way to the altar to give their offering to the Lord often two or three times in a single service. Youth choirs provide the primary music for the congregations, singing songs often written by their own directors 
They take the place of the church organ in carrying the worship of the day forward. Music is important, but the Word of God is central in Nigerian worship life. Training children is also a high priority. Sunday schools teach the children Bible stories and seek to mold their lives for Christ. Nigerians are highly organized and disciplined people. That is evident even in the children who show great respect for their elders. Yet even in Nigeria, kids will be kids. <laughs> Women perform valuable ministry in the churches of Nigeria. Pastor Enyedi Udo is president of Christ the King Lutheran Church of Nigeria. The women group uh, of this church are of help to the Synod. They have done uh, enormous work. They, they have achieved so many things for the glory of the Synod, the church in Nigeria. They, they, are, they stand at the forefront of helping the ministers, the workers here. Lutheran women in the villages meet faithfully for the morning devotions. They gather in prayer circles to pray for the sick and needy and take up offerings to assist them. They help transport the sick to medical clinics. They meet frequently to teach and encourage women with lessons and skits. They reach out to bring new women into the congregations. The Wells is providing some much needed assistance to these two church bodies. However, very little of this assistance is direct financial subsidy. In fact, All Saints Lutheran Church receives no subsidy from Wells, while Christ the King receives only a small amount. The majority of the financial aid comes not from the synodical budget, but from private donations by Wells members to the Nigeria Special Fund. Much of it is distributed as humanitarian aid or to fund special projects. Distributing these funds among the Nigerians can be a challenge. The challenge of being Americans here, even for a short time, having so much wealth by their standard, and how to say no to things, or even the difficulty of, of doing too much for our brothers so that they continue to be so dependent on, the, on us that they do less for themselves. So it takes a lot of thinking and praying to decide how much to do, when, and especially depending on their own leadership in these things. So we don't, we don't want our gifts to spoil their development as a self-standing church. One of the most visible and valuable forms of assistance is providing congregations with boreholes which provide a safe water supply. The first congregation to receive a borehole is Christ the King Lutheran Church at Korosam. We dedicated our first borehole from the Committee on Relief in 2002 here at Korosam. At the time, the chief received the borehole and said it would serve up to maybe 10,000 people with their daily drinking, washing, household water. Numbers are always a bit hard to pin down in Nigeria, but at least quite a number of people can use this borehole. It goes down deep enough to draw up very uh, safe water. Otherwise, from this point, they were walking five miles to the nearest stream. And in that stream, during the dry season, the water would become very low and the snakes would also come to the stream during the dry season. That prompted Ted Lambert to say uh, we should dig some boreholes and look for help within our synod to do so. Another congregation benefiting greatly from a borehole is the church in Akorofen. As in other congregations, this borehole provides more than just safe water. 
It is also an effective tool for reaching people with the living water, the good news of Jesus. We're at the water system of the Coral Fen Congregation in Christ the King. Uh, among many water system boreholes already provided in this area, what it does for the congregation, it provides water for the congregation, for the parsonage, of course, but it brings people right to their doorstep. Pastor Udo and others meet these people, introduce themselves, go to their homes and meet them there. And in general, the community, and every community where we have boreholes, feels that this is a church that truly cares about people, does not extort great amounts of money for the water, gives it to them almost freely. And they come and they uh, want to find out why a church like this, with its uh, partners in, in America, would love people so much to provide such a gift. Dance and song and dance, song and dance. The most important work Wells is doing with these two Nigerian churches is helping with their theological education. Christ the King Lutheran Seminary is located in the village of Orikuso. The campus was built by funds provided by Wells. There is a mission house in which visiting Wells missionaries live, a seminary classroom building, and a nursery school building which houses Luther's school for children aged four to about the sixth grade. Students desiring to serve as pastors first complete a two-year pre-seminary program which is taught entirely by Nigerian pastors and laymen. After completing this program, the men will serve as evangelists for one to two years or until there are enough men ready to form a new seminary class. The seminary program lasts three years, and when completed, the men are available for call or assignment to a congregation of Christ the King or All Saints Lutheran Church. Pastors from the Wells provide help by serving as visiting professors. These pastors usually come two at a time and teach for three weeks. They also prepare courses for the Nigerian professors to use after they leave. These efforts are vital to the success of the seminary and the future of these two sins. Teaching students in a foreign country presents some unique challenges, like language and cultural barriers. But these challenges are far outweighed by the joys and blessings. Truly a blessing to meet brothers half a world away who believe the same thing that we believe, the same confession of faith, to watch them grow up in that confession of faith there devotion to the ministry, their desire to be here, the trials that they go through in their daily life. It certainly reminds me of the many blessings that I have and I feel very blessed to be here. To be able to stand in front of a group of 11 young men and previously seven young men and to know that some of the work that I've, I've done here, some of the work that God has blessed me to do here, is work that will carry on uh, for this generation and the next generation until our Savior comes again. That, that's a tremendous joy. Our Nigerian brothers and sisters in Christ deeply appreciate the loving support we in the Wells are providing for them. I use this chance to thank them for what they have done to us, for, for their love, their concern, financially and otherwise. I want to show my gratitude to Wells because without Wells being on my side, we would not have been able to run the seminary. We hope uh, prayer that uh, association, I mean, association or fellowship will last till, uh, till the end. Till Christ of, comes again. Till right? Christ comes again. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> The easy thing would be to ask our people in America to just send money. <laughs> and certainly money will be needed for years for a lot of projects of different kinds. I don't think that's the most important. I think the most important is to remember that we have brothers and sisters in Nigeria in two different synods who work very, very hard to represent the Lord in their areas. In prayers, uh, in your, your thoughts, keep these people in mind. They very much keep uh, Americans and they keep Wisconsin Synod people in mind 
and their prayers, and we need to do the same. Money is, money is just a medium of exchange. What really counts is to know that you have brothers and sisters who share the love of Christ. That's what these people want, and I hope that that's what we want, too, as we think about them across the miles. I am running the race to 